There was a mill here many, many years ago in the 1800s called the Red Jacket Mill. That evolved over the years with a railroad that you can see built across the trestle here. And then the railroad was abandoned uh, and actually went back to private owners. And the county acquired it for a trail corridor, uh, bicycle, pedestrian, rollerblade to use, and has restored the bridge uh, probably 15 years ago uh, for that purpose. So everything was going well until September 2010 when a large flood, one of the largest on records actually, and, and unusual for that time of year, came roaring down this valley. The water got so high that it was up between the stone and the concrete portions of those piers. The uh, pier was damaged. There was a lot of flood-borne debris coming at a very rapid clip. Hit one of the limestone blocks, knocked it out, and then the pier started unraveling. The pier was uh, near collapse. More than half of the cross-section was lost. Uh, the stones were taken out due to the debris of the flood. The pier was only partially there. There was quite a hole in it. It was definitely an unsafe situation, so the trail was closed. And actually the road here was closed also because there was concern that the bridge might collapse and and hit uh, any traffic on the road. We looked at our options as far as removing, repairing, restoring. We did work with SEH on the project. We'd worked with them earlier on the Rapidan Dam, so we knew that they could bring the, uh, the expertise that we needed to the situation. We also had the support of MnDOT, of course, the MnDOT Bridge Office. Uh, we used the LiDAR system with the assistance of MnDOT to survey the section of the bridge. We found that it was very unstable, more than half the section was gone, and the decision was made to salvage the superstructure. We put a plan together within about a week's period to lift that main span off the steel span up on top, set it aside just behind where we're at, and then deal with the demolition of the pier and a reconstruction of the pier. We removed that superstructure set it aside, and as soon as the weight got lifted off, the pier actually collapsed, which was quite surprising and quite dramatic in itself. Everybody was out of the way. We anticipated a potential collapse, and it was a good time for it to let go. It was in a controlled uh, situation. And then uh, worked through the process of designing a new pier, working with the Historical Society, working with the County Board, of course, working with the state and FEMA. Uh, because the damage was due to the flood, FEMA was able to assist the county on the cost of the repair work and we're able to uh, recreate a nice resemblance to the original pier, replace that salvage span, and you have what we see here today. The pier is pretty substantial in size, about 40 feet by 15 feet at the base. To prevent a similar situation from happening again in the future, we added the plate on the nose, put sheet piling around the pier to protect the stones of that original pier. The new pier has sheet piling down around the perimeter and it sits on piling uh, down to rock. The piece you see behind us was a piece of iron truss work that supported the uh, beam inside the concrete column. We were able to take advantage of that. We salvaged it out of the river when the pier collapsed and put it along with a plaque describing the situation. Uh, it was a very successful project. The county's real pleased with it. They even had a ribbon cutting here by a lot of the cyclist community. And uh, this next coming weekend, uh, there's another trail crossing event, the River Ramble, that uses this bridge as a primary focus of their, their function.